What a powerful start, followed by one of the most effective musical messages ever. We used to hear this music played loud by an orchestra. But now, when I say powerful, I mean to the inner power of the music. And we have here this beautiful string quartet uh, who will help us to uh, feel it, this power, and also will help me with the musical messages. So is this music familiar to you? Yeah, I'm sure. And not only for people who used to go to the concert hall or listen to classical music, a pure success story that has had an impact and effect and presence for over 200 years and all over the world. Ludwig van Beethoven, in Hebrew we say Beethoven, but it's the same guy. Ludwig van Beethoven, symphony number five. Why is this music familiar to us? What is it about it? Why does it have such impact and such presence? Where does its power come from? And what does all this have to do with our lives? So, before we dive into the heart of the power of Beethoven, and the lesson that we can learn from him, I would like to relate to the way that our mind works. And this is what will help us to implement the insights that will come up and gain some of this power. So to this end, I've outlined three principles which characterize the way that our mind works. Principle number one. Only I think in my mind. Did you ever think about the fact that you and only you have ever thought inside your head? No one else have ever thought inside your head, and you never thought inside anyone else's head. Now, think about it for a moment, right now. In whose head? Clear. Principle number two. Our mind can think only one thought at any given moment. Even if thoughts change from second to second, still there is room in our mind for only one thought at a time. Now, if you just had a thought negating this idea, did any other thought pass through at the same time? No. However, rejection was there for a short period of time as a new single thought. Principle number three. We can think at any moment whatever thought we choose. So, uh, before you discuss this thing between you and yourself, let's make a little exercise. Think about a color, any color. When you have it, raise your hands so I know you're with me. Thank you very much. Now think about an animal, a certain animal. You don't have, I didn't say raise your hand. <laughs> I trust you. Okay, now paint the animal with the color you chose before. Now if you're laughing now or smiling, I don't know why. So change whether the animal or the color. Okay, think about a car and make it your dreams car. Good. Now, uh, Get in the car, turn on the ignition, listen to the quiet motor. Turn on the radio on your favorite station. You better turn on the radio on, on my favorite station. That's better. Now, think about where you want to go and listen to the music at the same time. Start on your way. Put your head out of the window. Feel the wind blowing in your hair, if you do have hair. Okay, okay, guys, don't let this spoil the exercise, sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, well, come back, come back now. Okay, so, I have two questions now. Question number one. Can you give yourself these instructions without me being here? Great, because I won't be here tomorrow, okay? Question number two. Did you think, for instance, during this time when you were putting your head out of the window, feeling the wind in your face, did you think about your bank account? Or about your last argument? Even if these things are really bothering you now? No, you did not. Because in your mind, you were out there feeling the wind in your face. So, 
only one thought in our only one head, and this thought can be freely selected. If so, we have this amazing ability to acquire, acquire new things through the world of thoughts, which is all ours and in our control. And isn't it worthwhile to take advantage of this to improve the quality of our lives and our sense of empowerment? So with this information or with these thoughts, let's go back to Beethoven's music mind. Why is this music so familiar to us? There are a few reasons, but uh, I'm going to share with you one of them. And only one. 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 Yes, I've repeated myself only six times, and already your curiosity was aroused. What's going on here? What happened to this guy? And if I would have kept repeating myself for another minute, this is what you probably would remember from this talk. This weird conductor did all the way from Israel to Berlin to waste dear TED Talk's time only to repeat himself, and only one, and only one, and only. This is a result of a repetition. And this is exactly what Beethoven is doing in this symphony. And since Beethoven is someone who is only doing things all the way, which is inspiring in itself, he is repeating this motif of ta 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 tam in the first movement alone, 176 times. Wow. Let's dive in for a moment. First of all, he starts with the establishment of the motif with two strong declarations. <laughs> Like saying, I'm going to ta 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 tam you today. <laughs> and, then he's, and then he's on his way. And we say, and we are right, that this is the melody of symphony number five. That's right, you're right. But have you noticed that this melody consists almost exclusively on one motif, ta-ta-ta-tam. Let's play it slower and hear it. It starts with the second violin, go to the viola and to the first. And ta-ta-ta-tam, 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 ta-ta-ta-tam. Oh, yeah. Later on, he takes a break, and he plays a new motif, a new theme. And we are familiar with this one too, right? And it's a smooth, and it is very soft, like, like new face. But, you know, when I hear it, I'm not relaxing, because I hear down there, from the realm of the low instruments, someone who is doing ta-ta-ta-tam, ta-ta-ta-tam, ta-ta-ta-tam. And he gave it to the cellos and to the basses, and uh, would you help me? We play it again. Listen carefully. And with this idea and with this motif, he continued to the other movements. For instance, on the third movement, slightly different dressing with horns, very clear. Ta 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 ta, ta 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 ta. And in the same movement later, the strings are chatting, they're talking, you know. They play what we call fugato. And uh, at the end, they gather for a few ta 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 tams. You ready? Yes, and also in the fourth movement, now we understand that it must come. Ta-ta-ta-tam, ta-ta-ta-tam, ta-ta-ta-tam. 
Let's hear it with a full score orchestra. Horns. Well, a few hundreds time throughout the symphony. And you know, we hear this symphony again and again, and we are not even aware of the impact that this repetition has on the music and on us. And the amazing thing is that I've heard musicians, I was speaking with musicians who had played this symphony dozens of times and never noticed that they were playing this ta 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 motif throughout the entire symphony. For someone who hears this symphony for the first time in his life, the ta 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 motif will most likely be remembered forever, if only because of the repetition. So, how does all this connect to our lives? Listen carefully. If we understand that something that, it rep is, that is repeated again and again and again is able to create such impact and presence, things that we really want to acquire, things that we really want to have, does the question not beg to be asked, what is my ta 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 ta? What is my ta 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 ta? What in the symphony of my life, in the symphony that is my life, is repeating itself over and over again and creating my presence, my impact, my leadership, my energy, my attitude, my image, who it is that I am to myself and to the rest of the world? What are those thoughts that are repeated again, again, again until they become a habit? We call it thought habits. And these thought habits, we're not even aware of them. Just like the musicians who have played this symphony dozens of times and were not aware that they were playing this motif. And these thought habits create our presence in life, in the world, with all that entails. Do you know people who stand like this? What's going on in his head? Oh, what a wonderful day. I love life, let's find an old lady, help her cross the street. No! No, completely different thoughts. And you won't see someone walking like this, smiling. Uh, excuse me, do you know a good place where I can kill myself here? No, completely different. The way we carry ourselves and our thoughts suit each other and impact one another. So here is a word of advice. If you think difficult, painful, bothersome, and you want to change it, stand up straight. This is easy to do, you know. And it will affect your energy and the way you think because your mind will recognize a dissonance. And this is exactly what's happening here now. We feel uncomfortable with this. Thank you very much. We cannot stand like this and think low. And that's easy to do, to stand up straight. So let's now read and see on the screen some thoughts, habits that we all have. And I want you to pay attention to the fact that there are pretty um, impora to one another, okay? I love life, life is great, or life is a nightmare. You can't trust anybody in this world. I trust the good, I love people. Oh, I don't want to see people. You know, this is for you to read, to choose, to select. And these thought habits, when we learn to be aware of them and to choose and select from them and to work with them, they have a very, very strong effect on the way that we design our lives in the long term. For instance, you know where I come from. I come from Israel. And I've this thought habit for years that I have no enemies. I have no enemies. I, I have no enemies, I tell you. 
I have no enemies. And it's a kind of state of mind that uh, impact my energy and my communication with people in a great way. But these thought habits can work also very well in the short term. And I give you now two examples of my favorite thought thinking, thought uh, habits that I used to use before my concert and my talks. Uh, number one, before any talk or a concert, I dedicate the last few minutes to this repetition. It's going to be a great concert. It's going to be a great concert. It's going to be a great concert. It's going to be. It's going to be a great talk. It's going to be great. I did it there. Not long ago. It's going to be a great talk, going to be a great talk, going to be... I simply fill my mind with what I want to manifest and I leave no space there for self-sabotage. Okay? And I want to offer you to use it in your events. Just make sure that you do it between you and yourself and not loud on the street because you may find yourself being led to a mental hospital instead of to where you want to go. The other one has to do with something that I never forget taking with me, love. I'm looking at the audiences before the concert or the talk, and I'm saying this, I love these people. I love these people. I love these people. I did it today too. Now, you don't have to prove me. Yes, yes, I did it. You don't have to prove me that you are deserved to be loved. No. I simply fill myself with love, and share this energy with you. So, before I finish my talk, and Beethoven starts his, uh, I want to dedicate the next few minutes for another ta 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 which is for me very, very, very important. Uh, this, this ta 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 uh, is responsible for so much of the pain and suffering of humanity. I think so. And I was debating whether to um, share it with you or not, but uh, the organizers convinced me to do it. So I do it happily, and especially in the context of where I come from. So it goes like this. Uh, when an infant, uh, in the age of um, two and a half, about the age of two and a half, an infant says for the first time in his life, I, me, mine, and we all get excited. This is the first expression of his mind as separate from the world, from others. It's a very important stage in the development of a child, but at the same time, a process of alienation may begin. The little child starts to see himself as separate, and from day to day, identifies more and more with the elements of this identity. From now on, these are my toys, this is my body, these are my needs. And when he grows up, he learns what his identity of thinking is, meaning, how and what should I be thinking? And he collects thoughts from the universe, from people, from the media, and he formulates them as my ideas, my opinions, my principles, and my beliefs. That little by little, in an unconscious way, become his well-defined I. And this I, turn to be so solid over the years until he sees it as all of my essence. And the grown-up child has shaped his or her perception, and from now on, they live in a state of mind of me and my story. In the world of today, People do not usually fight one another in a struggle for water or food. Most wars take place because of ideas, principles, and beliefs. That the ego, or the, the people, they see them as the truth. But in fact, these are only collection of thoughts that the ego has confirmed years by years this repetition. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. On one, side of the, on one side of the coin, imprinted clearly, I am right. While on the other side, always, since the ego cannot exist without resistance, the hidden message, he's not right. And here comes the great moment of the obvious conclusions. He's not right, he's wrong. He's guilty, he's an infidel, he's a traitor. Too bad I didn't kill him when he was still a baby. The thought... I'm right. Whenever it appears, 
is just another bar in the prison that we build around ourselves in our mind. In a certain stage in the life of every unaware grown-up person, he is not anymore belong to himself. He belongs to an idea, to a principle, to a concept. He lose his ability to choose. He lost his freedom. And here where the question is back to be asked, listen carefully. Are we condemned to a life sentence in the prison of our perception? And this I would like to offer you to add to your basket of ta-ta-ta-ta. And with regard to I'm right, I'm not right. I was only sharing with you thoughts that from my point of view may really, really improve the quality of our lives and set our mind free. I would also recommend to add a little question mark to this word, I'm right, and even change the order of the words for better use of the language and hopefully for a better world. So with what kind of thoughts you are going to leave this room today and continue on with your lives? Be creative. Choose the thoughts that are serving you very well, your values, your communication, your dreams, your desires. Take advantage of the rules of the mind and start to compose the symphony of your life. Thank you very much.